Hey class, so for this first exercise, I want us to create a polygon primitive cube and animate it. So um, I'm going to scale it up a tiny bit, maybe give it a scale of two. And that means that I can translate it up um, one. And that sits it perfectly on, let's do wireframe on shaded, on the base here. Okay, so um, a few things about animation. First, before we get anywhere, we really need to set our animation settings. So to do that, what we're gonna do is go to our animation settings or, and preferences, which is this little icon down on the right, or you can go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, and Preferences. Under the animation settings, you want to see if auto key is on or off. I believe in the latest version of Maya 2022 that auto key is set on. It's really important to know whether it's on or not. Um, and we will be discussing this later, but for now, let's turn it off. And you can confirm that it's off by this red button over here turning to gray. Um, what we really need is our time slider settings. And first we wanna confirm that our frame rate is 24 frames per second. That's general animation um, frames per second. Um, if you're doing games, 30 frames per second is also um, definitely widely used as well. The next most important thing is playback speed. So you wanna make sure by default, I believe play every frame is set. This setting is great if you're doing something like a deformation of a cloth, so like an end cloth animation. Um, but what we're really doing is animation. So we want 24 frames per second times one. And then you need to make sure you're hitting save. And before we go too much further, I wanna show you the difference that that setting makes. So if we set a keyframe in our animation timeline, so this is our animation timeline from one to 120, and we can change this range um, here. So you could go from 10 to 120, um, or 10 to really any number, let's change it to 50. Um, I'm going to set a keyframe here at this current position and press S. I am going to go to frame, say 30, move my box, set a keyframe, go to frame 50, move my box, and set a keyframe. Now, if I just hit play, you can see that I'm getting a pretty smooth animation of um, showing my box moving back and forth. Great. Now, if I go to my animation settings and preferences again, this little icon with the running man with the settings will automatically um, open up to the time slider. Now, if I change my playback speed to play every frame and hit save, watch what happens now when I hit play everything jumps all over the place. And because what it's actually doing is playing every single frame as quick as my computer can process it. Um, and let's stop that. Um, which is something we do not want unless we're doing one of those end cloth or um, VFX simulations. So I'm gonna go back to my little running man person, go to play, playback speed and change it to 24 frames per second. Um, also, you can change these options as well. So update view is active, um, active in all. The difference is if you have like a four panel viewport, if you hit all and hit save and then hit play, it will actually play your animation in all four frames. In contrast, if I go to active it and hit save, 
it will play only in the viewport that is most active or most recently active. So if I click in my different viewports, it will play in the different viewports. In general, we're gonna be looking at our viewport from the front or the side or perspective view, so um, you just want active. The last thing is an option for looping, whether you wanna loop once, oscillate, which means going forward and then playing it in reverse or continuous. Um, generally, you just want continuous. Okay, a few more things about our timeline sliders. So we have our actual keys here, or our frames here. And if you click and drag in the timeline slider, you can do what's called scrubbing, which is see the individual frames and the positions of the box in the individual frames. And if you kind of click and drag through, you can kind of quickly see your animation at work um, rather than having to hit play. You can also scrub back and forth between keyframes by pressing comma that goes to the previous keyframe or um, period goes to the next keyframe. Because I only have two keyframes, um, it's kind of irrelevant. Um, but you can see that in your time slider. So let's talk about the time slider. So we have four boxes underneath here. So these two are the start frame. So number one sets the start of the animation. And then the end of the animation is the other outside box here. In between you have the frame range sliders. So if you just wanna isolate a portion of your animation to just focus on working on that, that's how you would um, change this slider. And you can pull on these boxes or click and drag on these boxes. And you can also click on the bar itself and move it um, along. So now that I have all three keyframes up, if you press period, that will move yours, um, you to the next keyframe. If you press comma, it'll move you back. You can also press Alt and period to move forward just one frame or Alt and comma to move back one frame. And it's no um, coincidence that comma and period are right next to each other on the keyboard so they're easy to press. You can also use the play button on the right here and stop play or you could use these to play as that kind of step back one key and step forward one key. And I believe this little box here will tell you which frame you're actually in. So if you need to go to a specific frame like 51, you can also just type that in. So what if I want to change the placement of my keyframes? So I no longer want them to um, start at 10. So this is a little tricky the first time you do it, so I'd like you to kind of write this down and then follow along. If you press shift and left click once in the frame you want to move, and then click, release shift, click and drag, you can move your keyframe. So let's move this here, and then I'm gonna shift left click on frame 30 click and just hold down and drag all the way to frame 50 and now if i release both of them and then just click and drag i can move them over so now if i hit play and you can see because my frame range is pretty high. And when you click on your object, you can see all of your keyframes for your objects. So now you can see I've got one at frame one, frame six, and frame 26. So let's say one more time that I wanna move this frame 26 to the left. So I'm gonna press shift, click to activate this keyframe. Let go of both of my shift and click and then I can just left click and drag the keyframe into place. 
I'm going to do it one more time and select this entire frame. So click on one or shift and click on one, hold down and drag all the way to 20. And then I'm just going to click somewhere in the middle here and just kind of drag. So let's move it back to 10. These little icons in the middle here, this kind of triangles left and right indicate that it's able to be dragged. These little triangles on the outside actually mean that you can scale your timeline. So I can click and drag and make this longer if I'd like. Now one thing when you do that is that your keyframes will sometimes end up at like, in this case, I think it's at like 12.1 frames. This red line is not quite at two. So the way you fix that is you left click or press down shift, click, drag to select all of these again, right click and press snap. And that'll snap each key to the closest keyframe. So then let's play this one more time and we can snap it back and forth. There you go. So give that a practice before moving on. Okay, hopefully you just took a few minutes to just practice moving these keyframes around. And then I just also wanted to show you um, the channel box layer editor. Now, when we first set a key, it sets by pressing S, it sets all of these values. So, and you can see by it being light pink here versus dark red in this keyframe that these are kind of like in between frames and then it goes to dark red when you hit a keyframe. So that's one way you can tell what frame you're at, like if you're at a key or not. Um, you can also set individual values. So for example, if I want to rotate this, uh, let's just do on one axis, I can go to my value and I can like type in a value, um, but that doesn't actually set the key. What you have to do is right click and say key selected for just this one value or key all keyable and that turns everything red. So if I hit key selected, it will look exactly like a keyframe on my animation slider or my timeline slider, um, but it will also, only set the key if I said key selected. Um, so that's definitely something that you can also practice. The reason why we would set keys in one value and not another is because we don't necessarily need keys um, unless they're actually meaningful. Um, as you'll see when we get into our graph editor, um, it's actually better to have less keyframes and use your um, curves rather than um, setting a lot of individual keyframes. So less is more when it comes to keyframes. So what I want you to do is set a timer for yourself for maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I want you to just move, scale, and rotate Let's say, how about over here, I'm gonna set a scale key. And then here, let's give myself a little more time. Let's go to maybe 120. Okay. And I just want you to um, just play around, move some stuff around. Actually, let's just key all. And just play and see what you can do and see what you can come up with, with just these kind of move, scale, and rotate um, options. Set a keyframe. 
move it around. Set a keyframe, etc. And just kind of play around with what you're doing. Um, and just kind of have fun for like 10, 15 minutes. See what you can create. You can always add more frames at the end and just kind of um, create something interesting and fun with a cube. And that's your exercise 1.1. And when you're done with that, I want you to play blast it. For instructions on play blasting, please see the next video because it's a little complicated whether you have a Mac or a PC. Thanks.